What's up guys? We're back in the bilge and checking out the next item to work on. And we seem to be having a little bit of an issue with our so-called dripless PSS shaft seals. They uh, haven't been as dripless as they should be. And they've been spraying some water. They're located right here. We have a blast over wood stringer and the spray is spraying into the seam between the two pieces of plywood that's in there and the water is getting into the wood so one you don't want that to happen so we're going to do some sort of preventative uh, fix for that and uh, we're also going to see what the causes of them spraying I think what happened is uh, the shaft needs to be realigned it may be going a little bit off center uh, for those who don't know how the PSS shaft uh, dripless seals work they have this black ring here which is a graphite seal that's pushed up against a stainless ring and it keeps a uh, supposed to keep a watertight seal now you may get a little bit of spray or drips but um, it shouldn't be spraying out and uh, I'm not getting it that bad but you could see that water is starting to spray up in here and I could see water was leaking so uh, we're gonna take a look at that um, and uh, may have to realign the shaft which means unbolting that and getting our fuel gauges out and adjusting the motor mounts so we'll see how that goes here's the other end of the PSS shaft seal you can see it's a rubber bellows and that just keeps tension of the graphite seal onto the stainless uh, disc that's uh, mounted to the shaft so that portion stays you know, it doesn't spin. The only part that spins is the stainless shaft disc uh, and the shaft itself. The graphite seal and the bellows stays stationary. So uh, that's how that works. So I don't know if you could quite tell looking at uh, this picture. I'll try to get a side angle shot. But the uh, bellows of the shaft seal seems to be a little bit cocked. And I'm going to show you a picture uh, from the outside what this looked like when the uh, boat was out of the water. You can see the shaft sits a little bit low inside the shaft log. So uh, that's indicative of the motor mount rubber compressing over time. They're getting old and uh, you know, the shaft periodically needs to be realigned. So, I don't know if you can see the angle or not from this side where the shaft comes in on an angle into the bellows. So these four bolts need to be loosened you need to pull back the shaft coupling from the motor and then get some feeler gauges in there to uh, measure your tolerances and then adjust the motor mounts as needed. So I put a strap wrench on the shaft so I could spin it a little easier. It's hard to spin by hand, but uh, I don't know if you could hear it when I spin it. It's a squeaking noise that appears to be coming from the coupless bearing. So if you listen when I spin it slowly. one of the motor mounts to adjust it up and down there's two bolts you have to loosen this top bolt then underneath you raise and lower the bottom bolt and that will raise the engine up and down there's also what they call a trunnion adjustment trunnion bolt that's the bolt here in the back it goes through and it locks this pin in and it allows the motor to actually slide in and out on this pin. So if you need any side-to-side -side adjustment of the motor, you adjust that trunnion. But um, I'm probably guessing I'm just going to have to raise this. And there's four mounts like this, one on each corner of the motor. So you could raise and lower different sides of it. So uh, my guess is they would all four of them have to come up a bit. I'm going to try that and see uh, how that squeaking sound uh, goes because I know it's the engine sitting low uh, and the shaft is sitting low in the in the log in the uh, propeller shaft log. So you need an inch and an eighth wrench, pretty good size wrench to work on this. It's not a 
not a size that you typically uh, are dealing with and it's tough with the size wrenched to work on this. So I'm going to loosen this top nut. This is what it's the jam nut they call it. That locks it in place. Just not a few turns. So we get some play. And I'm going to look to raise that bottom nut. It's going to be difficult to get in there, but so loosening it. It's actually raising the motor. And of course, with this big wrench, you can't even get in there. So after what seemed like an hour trying to raise this motor mount up by quarter inch movements, we were finally finished. We raised that up about a quarter inch. We're going to do the other side now. There's nothing easy with adjusting these bolts with that large wrench. I'm sure you could get a smaller wrench that would fit in tight areas. You don't need a heavy duty wrench like this, but you do need an inch and an eighth size. I pretty much followed the same procedure for all four motor mounts and then checked the coupler to see what the clearances were. Okay, we fast forwarded a bit. We ran around, adjusted all the motor mounts. I did not completely pull the coupler away from the transmission. The bolts are loose and I used a feeler gauge to make sure I couldn't squeeze a three thousandth of an inch feeler gauge in between the coupler and the transmission. If you're unable to squeeze the feeler gauge between the coupler and transmission at all points around the circumference of that coupler, you're in good shape. All right, we look good all around. I think I gotta tighten these bolts now. To tighten the bolts, you'll need another wrench to hold the nut on the back side of the coupler. After tightening all the bolts, I used a socket to spin the shaft to see if I still had that squeak noise. And the squeak was gone. Alright, we're going to uh, start it up and see how it sounds and put it in drive. carefully felt around for any water spraying away from the coupler. Be very careful if you're putting your hands or body parts near a spinning shaft. It seemed pretty good. No water spray and no unusual sounds. Doesn't seem to be leaking, and it sounds better. It's not squeaking. All right, so now that that looks good, I'm gonna tackle another preventative maintenance issue. So, again, part of the issue is why, because this thing was uh, a little bit off center, the uh, dripless seals were leaking more than they should. If you can see. When the water was spraying, it was spraying into the wood, part of the stringer there, and getting that wet just because the seal is exactly in the middle of that stringer. So I'm going to uh, cut a piece of rubber hose and put it around this opening of the stringer, slit it long ways. Sort of hard to explain, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So if any water does spray, it'll just hit the rubber hose and then drip down to the bilge so it won't get soaked into that stringer anymore. On both sides, it's pretty much. And that's where I noticed that drip. So water is getting in the stringer and dripping out of there just from the spray of this dripless seal. So I'm going to take care of that so we don't have that issue. It doesn't get any worse. I'm going to check some of these clamps. They don't look like they're in the best of shape. Probably should be replaced. I'm going to probably rebuild this uh, coming next season. When the boat's out of the water, I'll pull this and put a new uh, rebuild kit of the PSS seals. It costs about $100. So what I decided to do to remedy this situation 
was to buy a few feet of hose to use as a barrier that could uh, deflect any water spray that may come from the PSS chef seals. So I went by the marine store and picked up a few feet of bilge pump hose, which is nothing but a thin-walled, corrugated plastic hose. I cut the hose to a length I needed, and then I sliced it long ways on the outside circumference of the hose. This would allow it to friction fit nicely on the stringer without using any fasteners. The hose is easily spread apart and squeezed over the stringer. I used two pieces of hose and they overlap nicely. So here's the finished product. It looks pretty good and it's functional and it will definitely keep any water from hitting those stringers any further. So in the meantime, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave any comments in the comment section. We'll see you next time.